I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to talk about transactions and how to perform transactions with many SQL statements so that if any one of them fails, they all fail. And uh, this is one of the things uh, that is really great for if you're designing applications that you know do things like room bookings or things like that where there's a limited amount of items and you want to make sure that you know people don't overbook things and so uh, without further ado let's get to our transactions in Microsoft Access. Interested in coaching or one-on-one -on -one help on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Okay, so I'm using this file here, and it's one we've used before. And I've got I've I've made two tables uh, that have sort of transaction data in them. They're very simple tables. It just has a code, a description, and an amount plus an ID. And each of the tables is the same. And we're gonna kind of we're gonna pretend that you know if we insert, we always want to insert into both of these. Um, there will be two different codes that happen between them. As you can see, uh, this transaction code has 16 and the other one has 8. Um, so there's a little bit of difference between the tables uh, just to demonstrate um, some gotchas, but also where things can just generally go wrong totally. And so uh, what I'll do is I'm going to create a VBA uh, procedure here. I'll make a new module and I'm going to call my sub uh, my transaction um, and uh, we'll perform a transaction in this uh, subroutine and uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to call um, my my workspace object I'm going to make that a DAO workspace and then I'm going to create a, a variable for my database as well just to reference the database and I'm going to create a, uh, a boolean uh, variable to sort of mark off um, that we are in process, uh, that the transaction is happening, and uh, and I'll have an SQL string, uh, which is going to be nice and handy to pass into the database to to execute. And so I'll start off. I'll set the uh, in process equal to false, and uh, just above that, I think what I'll do is I'm going to put in um, our on error um, statement. So that's going to basically direct the code of where to go when if there's an error that happens and so if there's an error in the SQL or if there's an error in your VBA um, it, there's kind of an overlap here and I'm going to demonstrate this by the end of this video because uh, the transaction not only happens can be rolled back if there's a problem in the SQL but also if there's an error in your VBA code so so it's kind of a, a an overlap, whereas traditional databases, um, it's almost entirely in the database engine itself, um, you know, just to do with the SQL and, and the uh, engine. In this case, uh, we can roll back if we have something that happens in VBA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my workspace object equal to the, uh, the, the first workspace, which is zero. Um, and uh, you can actually have other processes that other processes that happen in other workspaces if you want while your transaction uh, is happening um, but uh, generally people just use the first one um, and then I'll set my database and I'll set my uh, in process and then I'm gonna use the uh, workspace dot begin transaction and the commit transaction and everything in between there is what's gonna either all it's gonna sort of work or it's all gonna fail and so we want it so that if we go all the way through our you know setting up our booking and we you know or whatever in in our um, database uh, but then somehow the room that you want to book isn't there and, and maybe you have a constraint or or something like that um, then we can roll it back and in this case we're actually just gonna look at actual errors that happen if there's a uh, problem with the SQL and, or with or if we have an error that happens in VBA. So the transaction error colon that you see there, that's sort of uh, where we're sending uh, our transaction, or pardon me, our code if 
if there's an error that occurs. Uh, and so um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know, um, if, if it's still in process um, with the Boolean there, then we're going to roll back the, the transaction that occurred um, so that none of the statements will execute. Um, even if we already called one and it was successful in our, you know, in, in the sequence of statements, um, it's going to roll all of them back. And then we'll set up our exit, uh, which is above there. It's above the transaction error, and there's a reason for that. And so after we deal with our error, we'll uh, send the code back to the exit, um, and then it'll do some cleanup or whatever. Um, and if there's no error, then the code just naturally flows into the exit and, uh, and does the cleanup. And so <clears throat> that's pretty important um, for, our, uh, for our transaction. So I'll put a debug.print done. So whether or not it's successful or not successful, if it makes it through, it's going to say that it's done. Um, but uh, if, if there is an error, it's going to say, hey, there was a problem. And so that'll give us a little bit of feedback. You could also, you know, do message boxes for that. So, so that whole block up above, it's going to run. If there's an error, it'll go to this block here that I've highlighted, and then it'll resume after it's done with the error, and it'll finish there. Uh, alternatively, if there's no problem in this block here, it's just going to flow straight into this block, and it's going to exit um, gracefully, I guess you'd call it. Um, and so that's going to set us up to, to have a little bit of error handling. It's going to roll back the transaction if we have a problem, and that's exactly where we want to go from there. So uh, I'll set up my SQL string. I'm just going to say, you know, insert into, um, you know, transaction table one, um, tra transaction code and transaction description and, uh, and the amount, and then I'll just put in some values. Um, and this first string here, this first statement is going to be successful as the code runs through. And, uh, and the second statement, we're going to have a mixture of, you know, passes and fails. And ideally, if either of them fails, both of them will fail. And if both of them are good, then they'll both go through. And that's the idea behind uh, doing transactions. So you could have like 10 SQL statements updating all kinds of tables and checking checking for you know different things and you could um, you could do a raise error if you wanted to if you found something and you actually wanted to create an error where there actually wasn't one just to roll everything back you can do that as well so um, so basically uh, I'm gonna copy and paste that first one I'm gonna use db.execute with the SQL string and make sure that you put the DB fail on error in there. Um, otherwise, um, the the database engine is very, very, uh, <laughs> it'll insert things that aren't supposed to be inserted and, and it'll just, um, it'll allow things very, very flexibly and we want to sort of let it fail if there's an actual error in the, in the statement. So, as you can see, in this case, I've got two statements that will go through properly. Um, I'll change this to a different number. I'll say $45, say, and then um, those two should work fine. So this is a case where both of these guys work great. They, you know, they, they both work, so it should flow through without going to the error. And so there we go, it says it's done. And if I go and look at the tables, I can see um, there's, the first one, that was the first step of my transaction, went to this table and it inserted it, which is great, which is what I wanted to see. And the second statement worked as well. And so there we go. Uh, both of our statement went, statements went through. The transaction was a success. And uh, that's what we want to see there. So there are some gotchas, even with the DB fail on error. If I put in a string that's too long, um, it's pretty it's pretty lenient compared to you know traditional databases which will definitely fail there in this case uh, the transaction went through fine even though there's only an eight character limit on that field um, it just truncated the rest of the data off um, which is 
a bit of a gotcha and uh, um, so you should watch out for that with your text fields it may still let those go through it's going to let those go through so that's something to uh, keep in mind however if i create something that's uh, really going to fail um, you know if i put a string into say a numeric field or something like that um, then it's really going to um, it's going to cause a real error to happen that can't really be bypassed and uh, that's going to cause this to fail now db fail on error will roll back the current statement but uh, we're going to uh, want to roll back a whole bunch of statements in our case and so when i run this you can see now there's our error message because it went to our error block and it said the transaction was uh, rolled back because there was a problem and if I open our table, you'll see that the third row, or yeah, the third row was not um, inserted. And uh, the third row for the second table was also not inserted, the one with the error in it. And so that's really exactly what we want to see. We, you know, either both of those statements are going to, they're going to be successful or both of them are going to fail. And so I can run it again and again, and uh, it's not going to matter. Um, it'll just roll back each time. Uh, both of those statements and if I go and look at my uh, data again I'll open it fresh here and uh, you can see there still isn't any data being inserted uh, into the database and so um, being able to do the uh, uh, transaction is very very helpful um, because we want everything to go or nothing to go so I can uh, put that back to something that is going to work um, like 12,000 instead of a alphanumeric uh, value and if I hit run then it's gonna go through just fine and uh, now when I open my table um, we've got two rows in or pardon me one uh, row in each table that was inserted the third row in each table and that's uh, what we want to see so now just to break this uh, in another way we'll actually get an error in our VBA code instead where I'll create an integer called uh, integer try, which has a maximum value of 32, like 765 or something like that. I can't remember the exact number. <clears throat> so if I overload that uh, with a huge number af after both statements have gone, and you know I say, hey, this integer is, is this value, um, even though both of those statements are now, they're fine, now I can run that and you can see oh, it rolled it back because we had an error in our VBA code which is right there you can see where I set the breakpoint and uh, and that's a very very handy thing as well because if you have some things happening in VBA that might cause uh, your transaction to to fail or, or to be invalidated somehow then you want to be able to capture that error as well as the database error and so if I try to run that, it, it just won't let it go through, even though both of the SQL statements are, are properly you know, created. Um, and if I comment it out, it will run. And uh, so now you can see our data is in both tables. And uh, that is how you can use transactions in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do transactions in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell, and put any questions you might have in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.